All right, peace family. We are now live. Let me make sure everything's good with my mic. Let me fix this here. Okay, peace to the family out there. Peace, 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 peace. How y'all living? How y'all living? Indeed. I'm about to bring my guest on. The brother, he he's he was on the show, I believe, last year, early last year. Uh, some of you, yeah, a lot of you remember the brother. So I'm about to bring the brother on. Uh, first and foremost, I want all y'all to hit that like button. Tell your friends and family we're live. We're going to have a great, amazing conversation tonight. And uh, first, as usual, we're going to get to a few commercials. So let's roll to a few commercials. Then I'm going to bring on the amazing guests that we have the pleasure of listening to tonight, family. Thanks for tuning in. I'll be right back after this commercial break. a bad dream i have dreams too some parts are scary and some parts are fun always remind yourself it's only a dream and everything will be okay i had a dream about being in a forest too check it out my pet pd was with me order your copy of kayla pd and the forest on amazon today it's the new motivational session with King Simon. Text your full name and date of birth to 347-496-1022. That's 347-496-1022. And get my books on Amazon now. All right, all right, family. We are back. Without further ado, want to bring on the guest tonight, Q Reeves. Welcome back, my brother. Q Reeves in the building. Thank you, thank you. Thank you for having me. I hope y'all can hear me okay. Good? I wasn't sure. Yeah, the audio is good, brother. What you been up to, man? <laughs> man, maintaining, surviving, you know, getting getting the upload, getting to upload and having the downloads <laughs> in a sense. So is, is that the I matrix thing it. behind you? The the matrix download? Is that is that it behind you? Uh so what this no man, ain't that a crazy connection? That look right, like so it. I see it's raining. And oh. I never even thought about how Ooh. the cold the rain. Oh. We, we, we made a breakthrough already. Record breaking time, family. In two minutes, we made a, a down a major download. Oh Ooh. my god, in two minutes, a major discovery. Clean. Oh shit. You see, oh man, that's a, well, that happens fast, y'all. In no, record breaking time. You. Appreciate you. I mean, you sitting there literally with like a symbol of I and in back of you with the rays glowing. Yeah. You know, you got the whole liberty. You here liberating us, Rich, on, on, on the low. I don't know if you really understand just how, how much your life speaks throughout you and around you. Mm. We do appreciate you. I mean, like, super appreciate you. I'm just honored to be able to build with you tonight. I appreciate it. I definitely appreciate it, my brother. Uh, I want to start out by saying I want to have this conversation with you tonight. Um, you, you're, you're in, you do the past life regressions, and I think that's an awesome uh, a field that we need to understand and research and study more. And hopefully one day I could do a show strictly on that with you. But because you do that, man, you be talking to like entities and all types of shit. So I'm like, yo, you the perfect person. If I want to go to some ancient, ancient, ancient times, and I don't, I just don't want to go get information that's in a book. I'm going to check out. I definitely got to contact Q Reeves and um, get some of that information. And plus you had a video on you. What's your YouTube channel, by the way, my brother? Uh, Q Reeves, C U E R E A V E S. That's my YouTube, my social handle, all that good stuff. Yeah, uh, definitely check out his YouTube family. The brother has um, a unique YouTube channel, and uh, the brother drops information that sometimes you can only hear from the brother. So it's definitely, uh, you definitely got to check the brother out. I definitely appreciate the downloads you always get, my brother. Uh, to start out with, I, I seen you do a video on the sun on your channel um, and it being a spiral and you saying, I forgot exactly what the title was, but there's so much I hear about the sun. And before this sun, they say Saturn was the sun. And before that, and I, I just want to, I need to know the history of all of this brother, because the sun is people worship the uh, worship the sun in ancient cultures. So I'm like, 
who the hell is this son that we see? What is it? What are we getting from it? And, and who was the son before that son, before that son, before that son? Talk to me, my brother. What's going on with, with, with the son and its history? Beautiful question. So anytime I kind of get into these topics, I often like to pull on regression sessions. Yes. So I can give you a quick story of one. Tell what is that? Tell people for those. What okay. is that? All yeah. right. Yeah. So uh, regression is a practice mm -hmm. where you're able to, and, and the word's definition means to go back into. Mm -hmm. So the word regression means to go back into. So to regress one's mind would mm -hmm. be to go back into one's mind. Yes. To be able to access aspects of the mind that you don't consciously ask uh, access or that you don't consciously uh, handle where it's kind of like handling you. Like, for example, you don't tell your mind body to growl. I'm hungry right now. But it tells you, <laughs> growl, <laughs> I'm hungry. Yeah. So these are like subconscious communications. This is the body, mind, mind, body communicating and speaking to you all the time. Mm -hmm. And I realized that there's certain aspects of self that are affecting or is affecting the life, meaning that certain things that we're dealing with in our mind is actually affecting mm -hmm. our reality. And I had a specific client mm -hmm. who she was having a hard time at work. She was being extremely aggressive, overly aggressive in mm -hmm. the sense, mm -hmm. um, while she was at work where they thought something was wrong with her. So I ended up regressing her. And oddly enough, now I, I know this may sound weird, but oddly enough, she claimed to house a consciousness that referred to itself as the child of the Nephilim. Mm. I'm like, child of the Nephilim, what are you? And mm. it basically said that it was a hybridized creature that mm -hmm. some will refer to in modern day times as a dinosaur. Mm. Right? It's not a dinosaur. Dinosaurs, in a sense, didn't exist by its understanding. They were more like creations of the children of gods, that these children of gods kind of used genetic splicing and gene therapy and cloning and, you know, created hybrid creatures. And one of these hybrid creatures was inside of this lady named Kate, <laughs> Miss Kate, a uh, 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 white lady named Kate, oddly enough. And she was extremely aggressive. And I end up communicating with this entity. Mm -hmm. And it said that it doesn't remember itself, mm -hmm. that it just popped up inside of her. Mm -hmm. And I was like, give me more understanding. It said it remembers seeing a large light, a bright light, a sun. Mm -hmm. We were getting to a sun in a sense and following this sun and ending up inside this lady named Kate. I said, mm. Very interesting. Mm. I said, do you remember your time frame? And it said that it doesn't, but with time or with working with it, it will. Mm -hmm. So over time, I discovered that it talked of a time of two sons. Mm -hmm. And I was like, all right, describe it. And it was like, there was a time that there was what we call the red sun and the blue sun. Mm -hmm. And that during the time of these red and blue suns, gods walked the earth. Mm -hmm. So I said, wow, two wow. suns, ain't that deep. Mm -hmm. Red sun, blue sun. Now, I then wanted to pull from the life. Is there any reference in the life that represents that? And what I do with anything in the life is I speak to the life. I speak to God around me. I speak to God within me. I speak to goddess around me. I speak to goddess within me. My, my girlfriend, I speak to the goddesses and her, my employees. I mean, everything that I'm around, I'm speaking to the universe mm -hmm. and kind of realizing that I'm the black hole mm. sucking it all in mm -hmm. that the center of every universe is a black hole. Yes. So I kind of realized that, that I'm kind of dictating the spiral rotation of my world, of my universe mm -hmm. by <clears throat> getting information, triggering, accessing, accessing the information of those around me. Mm -hmm. So anyway, I came across an elder. Found out he was Wichita, native, Wichita, mm -hmm. uh, native man. Mm -hmm. And he told me that that's so interesting that you said something about these red 
and blue sons. He said, in our culture, we talk about this. He says, mm -hmm. this is called red and blue Kachina. Mm -hmm. Red star Kachina, blue star Kachina. Mm -hmm. He said, during these times, these are representations in their culture as like two brothers. And mm -hmm. these two brothers are representation of these two sons. Mm -hmm. So before I go deeper into the Kachinas, we got to bring that into context. Well, every day we're kind of looking at a sun. Mm -hmm. What color do you think the sun is? But well, please don't let television confuse the reality of really what's happening. The yellow sun that we have isn't so much yellow. It's an ordinary white star mm -hmm. whose light is filtered through our atmosphere. That mm -hmm. atmosphere is made up of little particles that scatter across the blue light. Blue gets thrown across the sky, which is then leaving the blue light filtering out the rays of the sun or the, the white of the sun, leaving the yellow that we get. Mm -hmm. So basically here on Earth, we're just perceiving the sun mm -hmm. as a red or yellow sun. I said, OK. I asked this creature that was inside of Kate. I said, where did you exist? He said, we lived on Mars. I said, oh, shoot, hold on. Mm. So I said, I wonder what color the sun is on Mars. You pull up the picture. I think it's right here. Let me just pull it. Mm. Now go to. Hold on. Well, I'll just keep talking. So, so I asked myself, what is the color of the, the sunrise or sunset? On Mars, I got mm. a picture. Oh, okay. So let's see if I can pull this up. Yes, I see it. Let me add it. I see it. All right. Okay. This is a blue sunset. And this is what it looks like on Mars. It actually looks like a blue sun. This is the same exact sun. This is not any different sun than the sun that we have right now in our skies. Mm -hmm. All right. Now, oh, okay, yeah, we could we could pull that off. Um, all right. So when I realized that, I said, "Oh wow, all right, these red sun, blue sun, it could potentially mean two different suns, mm -hmm. or it could potentially mean the same sun, just operating in different manners, in mm -hmm. different mannerisms." Now, that was a theory that we're dealing with one specific sun and based on the atmosphere of the planet we are observing the sun we mm -hmm. will understand if it's a blue kachina or a red kachina here on earth we see it as red on mars we see it as blue so if they're saying that there's a genetic imprint within humanity that has an association to mars what mm -hmm. science says does when we leave this atmosphere our bodies naturally get associated to the cadence of Mars before it gets associated, I mean, uh, and bypasses the association of Earth. So it actually shows that our bodies naturally gravitate more to Mars than it does to Earth itself. Mm. So there's, a, there's, a then, there's then an association to us having a remembrance of this blue uh, sun and now a remembrance of this red sun. And this would then make more sense when I'm about to explain to you why they believed in these two suns, why they believed in, two, believed in these two expressions and how these two expressions is associated to the times that we're in right now. Mm -hmm. And that even these Wichita people believe that the last days is in 2030. Oh, that's what they said? Yes. And I'm about to get into Ooh. all what they're talking about with this Kachina. Now, okay. when we come into the spiral, Mm -hmm. Just to kind of touch base on that, that's a really, really interesting construct because, of course, any spherical concept with something in the middle of it will mm -hmm. be perceived as a spiral. Mm -hmm. So Saturn itself was the observing spiral. We will look to the sky and literally see this spiral. And we will understand that there is an association to this light of Saturn, to this luminescence or or uh, uh there's something to this planet right in a sense it's not it isn't just like jupiter 
It isn't just like Mars. It isn't just like Mercury. There's something special about this planet. Mm -hmm. And they dedicated and associated that planet to the primordial spiral or the primordial waters, Mm -hmm. which is really symbolic for a black hole. Mm -hmm. So there's theories that through Saturn, you can actually get to the black hole. Right. There's a back door. Yeah, I probably heard some interesting stuff. It's why even on the movie OA, when he was killing off those individuals, he was listening to the rings of Saturn. Mm. Because he showed that they travel in death to Saturn. So it's really known as the death sun or the Darth sun because mm-hmm. it's the sun that some travel to in death. Mm-hmm. But there's the sun we have, mm-hmm. and then there's the sun that some claim that has spiraled out of control, which mm-hmm. is planet X and Nibiru. Now that's interesting as well. Because that has to do with a whole nother culture. Okay. When we're talking about Nibiru, we're talking about the Sumerians. We're talking about the Anunnaki. Okay. We're talking about those individuals. Right. So we can get into that. But right right now, I want you to kind of understand what the natives of the lands we're walking on right now believe is going to happen in connection to these two suns. Okay. All right. So they basically believe that we have already connected to the blue star Kachina Mm -hmm. when we lived on Mars. It then said that shortly after the introduction of the blue star Kachina, we would be introduced to the red star Kachina. Mm -hmm. One, One version of this sun represents the North Pole, Mm -hmm. while another version of this sun represents the South Pole. Which then gets me theorizing that, of course, our sun kind of represents this northern construct, while we don't see this other sun that kind of stays below us. Mm -hmm. So that's interesting that they would say that. All right. So this is what they say. They say in the final days of the red and blue Kachina, it will refer it will return the poles to their original motion Mm -hmm. or or the planet. I'm sorry. It will reverse the poles and it will turn the planet to its original motion. Mm-hmm. Some say that from the North Pole looking down on the planet, we spin counterclockwise. Mm. While we're kind of on the planet, we're kind of spinning clockwise. Sun mm-hmm. rises in the east, sets in the west. Mm-hmm. We're saying that us on this planet, things will go in reverse. And they said that during the age of these two suns, you would see the reversal of things. From the reversal of ages, meaning people looking younger, that you've gone to school with some people that look a little uh, older during school, and you look at them now, you're like, damn, girl, what you do? <laughs> Benjamin Button's out here. No, that's facts. In yeah. our life. And it's this facts. is the reversal of, of time itself having it's to facts. do with these two planets. Now, mm-hmm. this is what they said. This isn't my own words. I just kind of wrote down to try to, like, pinpoint some mm-hmm. of the things that they said. So during the age of these second suns of these dual suns, <clears throat> people will vanish. Mm -hmm. And we will be dealing with what some refer to as a rapture, that there will literally be people vanishing that we have no understanding of where they go. All right. Now, this is one concept that the rapture will be associated with the introduction of these two sons. Mm -hmm. Now, it's interesting that the whole theory of two sons started off in the 50s and 60s. Shortly after the little UFO introduction, shortly after UFOs supposedly are abducting and kidnapping individuals. So all this is kind of done in the same arena. UFOs, abductions, uh, 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 the rapture kind of coming in during the discovery of these two planetary systems. Um, Confusion among sexes. That's also said to happen during the age of these two sexes. Extinct animals returning. I mean, I just read an article. They're trying to bring back the Willie Mammoth by 2027. Wow. They're going to have Willie Mammoth parks. Jurassic Park is a real thing. I mean, it's just it just doesn't exist in our time space yet, but it exists. We're just waiting to catch up to it. Mm. Um, no social order. Uh, children and, and adults becoming perverted amongst each other, kind of blurring the lines between mm-hmm ages Mm -hmm. they said after that we then have seven signs that will lead up to what they refer to be the year 2030 
Mm-hmm. Now I'm going to give you a little short breakdown of what they say these signs are going to be. Mm-hmm. They did, And it's interesting that they don't refer to these things as seven signs. They call it seven thunders, meaning mm-hmm. seven sounds. Now, I'm an advocate for sound because I, in my own personal philosophies, believe that sound is the creator. God mm-hmm. said, let there be light. Mm-hmm. So from sound comes light. These sound memories spark thoughts that get things into motion, call action, call light. Mm-hmm. So physical manifestation is a hierarchy of things. Mm-hmm. So they called it a thunder. Mm-hmm. And this first thunder, which is a lightning bolt, which mm-hmm. is interesting because this is what the Vrail symbol is, which is associated to the Thule society that governed the Nazis. Mm-hmm. This is a symbol of fascism and Nazism. Mm-hmm. This is also a symbol of Zeus. Mm. Now, some say that they praise this lightning bolt because while some of the original people on this planet had the ability to bring fire from their own luminescence, Mm -hmm. meaning that we had the power to actually light fire with our hands. Mm -hmm. Um, There's a a lot of uh, elders that I used to watch interviews that say some of the abilities that these monks used to have from being able to deal with extreme cold temperatures to Mm -hmm. spark things with Mm -hmm. their very hands so there's proof in the life of this so it's said that there's these original people had the ability to do things that our current world prevents us from doing like Mm. for example if we get cold right now we instantly turn on the thermostat right we run to the heater but in ancient times we used to use sound to heat ourselves up we used to use the power of ohm to literally charge ourselves up so we forget some of these these concepts so this thunder kind of represents something from, from above falling below. And this thing that fell from above that came below supposedly gave fire to a certain people on, on the Kakaku Mountains. <laughs> and in, these, in this area, they discover fire from a bush because light struck this bush. This is actually talked about in the Bible in a very mm. coded way. But this lightning struck this bush, and this is what kind of gave them the understanding and the ability of luminescence, so illumination. This is how, how your masons got started and everything kind of started right. from this bush. So anyway, this first thunder, they said it's going to be the, the spiraling of political power, meaning mm. that political power is going to be contested. And that mm. happened in the 1900s, World War mm. One. <laughs> That was the spiraling of political power. The resurrection of the ancient past. That happened in the 1800s. All these excavations and all these rich people stealing ancient Egypt and stealing ancient Kemet, stealing ancient uh, 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 South Mayan uh, Mayan, uh, uh, culture. Just, Just pillaging. Colonizers is what Black Panther refers to them as. But these colonizers just essentially stealing the past. And placing it within their own vicinity, placing it within their own homes so that they have the ability to kind of download this frequency. Mm. No different than why they wanted slaves. So Mm -hmm. they can download this frequency. Now, at the end of the day, this is kind of like the story of Yakub versus versus big head scientists where they were like, Yakub got caught at 6%. While, while the big head scientist was able to get up to 9%. So it's mm-hmm. like, even if they was able to get around us, they still can only get 60%. They can never really hit that nine. Mm-hmm. But it would be the resurrection of the ancient past. Uh, and that has been happening for the last 150 years. Sickness, starvation, and, and the rising of homelessness, once again, has been happening for the last 150 years. New age diseases, once again, happening for the last 150 years. So we've been through the first thunder. Mm-hmm. Second thunder, the sky will become sick, filled with holes in the ozone layer. Mm. That has been expressed in the early 30s in articles expressing that they're worried about all the factory pollution that they've done in the factories that existed in the early 1900s and the damage that's happened to the ozone layer. So they have been fully aware of the ozone layer damage for a good 60, 70, 80 years. Uh, breathing in polluted water or breathing issues in polluted water. Once again, uh, uh, smog. I mean, they have pictures of, of San Francisco, Los Angeles, when they started having those heavy cars. They had smog in the 60s. 
Mm-hmm. They literally had issues of smog in the 60s. That's air pollution. Mm-hmm. Dying fish, last hundred years. Uh, people, um, uh, oceans uh, connecting to the land more frequently. And as we all know that that Katrina and, and, and some of the other various hurricanes right. have been rampant. Um, I actually discovered uh, that the Mississippi River flooded in the early 1930s and 40s, which created what we call the Great Migration, which is how a lot of the Black people got where they are now. Chicago, New York, a lot of these people were, were near the Mississippi, and mm-hmm. a lot of them had to leave their homes from mm-hmm. this, uh, some call it cloud seeding, um, mm-hmm. to, to destroy their lands and remove them from their lands. So the Mississippi River was kind of uh, allegedly flooded on purpose, and it destroyed a lot of uh, uh, influential people's lands. It's the same time they were taking it from us in New York. They were systematically right. moving Black Wall Street, all this. This was Everywhere. systematic yeah. uh, to take away what uh, the indigenous had here already. Mm-hmm. Keep that in mind. Uh, according to the Constitution, the first president was a Native being. He was mm-hmm. not uh, a white man. Um, mm-hmm. uh, Wichita is where Washington comes from. So mm-hmm. He took the whole name from the Wichita people, which is who we're talking about right now. Mm-hmm, mm-hmm. Um, so in the third thunder, they're going to be doing crossbreeding and hybrids emerging. Now, uh, uh, on the Montauk Island, they showed a creature about 15 years ago that washed up on shore. That looked like a complete like mermaid fishman creature. Mm-hmm. Uh, I watched a conspiracy theory with Jesse Ventura mm-hmm. back in the day. And I was like, damn, what the hell is this little hybrid creature? Once again, I'm just trying to help people know we've been through it. So they ain't getting worried. You know, this ain't baiting fear on the people. It's to mm-hmm. let people know how we're adding up to 2030, mm-hmm. why they believe this to be true. We've survived all these things I'm about to mention. So, right. so keep that in mind. Um, yeah, so frogs, bees, and salmons disappearing. That's another uh, prophecy. Uh, humans employing gene splicing and cloning to save civilization. That's third thunder. Fourth thunder. We will have proof of the twins. And this is why there's pictures of two sons. This is mm-hmm. why people say there's two sons. This is why there's philosophies and threads and common conversation that there may be two sons. Mm-hmm. Because it literally says in the fourth thunder, there will be proof of the twins another concept is there's going to be havoc from pole to pole meaning that there's going to be complications from pole to pole now when i processed that i started to realize what they're talking about is kind of like global warming and mm. how like caps is melting and all the shifts um many people don't realize that the atlantic ocean wasn't always an ocean it started off as a sea, and before actually it was once a sea, and before mm. it was a sea, it was a river. And there's mm. maps of this. Mm. There's maps to prove this. I'm actually going to do a live on this uh, coming up. But it's to show that from the river, it's just like from a sperm cell, we became this. Right. So right, right. Think it'll pop up. So mm. from the river, it, it used to be called Oceana Sea. O- Oceana Sea. Yes, and then it became the Ethiopian Sea. Mm-hmm. And then from the Ethiopian Sea, it became the Atlantic Sea or Atlantic Ocean. But and Oceana is is a is a Roman a Roman god. So right. so it, it it it's interesting when when we talk about that. But they're, so so they're saying have it from pole to pole, and not to get all fear baited. Oh my God, when they're talking about poles shifting and stuff like that, that's not exactly what it's saying. It's just saying that there's going to be evidence of things happening straight from the North Pole all the way to the South Pole. All right. Religion and financial system failing and becoming one. Mm -hmm. Now, I had to think about that. When did the religion and financial system become one and then it's going to fail? So it's, it's once they become one, then they're going to fail. I went into church. And the cop, I mean, not the cop, well, <laughs> the pastor had, you can Venmo me, cash app right here. Oh, I'm like, oh yeah, y'all definitely in the financial system. Like the mm. moment y'all started to accept taxes, tax mm. cuts, yeah, the yeah. moment it's no longer just tides. 
when you make it or make it beyond tiding, this is then when it got a little complicated. And I realized that this is then when the when the religious institution and financial institutions kind of came together. Um, this is associated to, allegedly to the Vatican. Mm-hmm. That the Vatican has that much influence and power that they are also associated to how the financial system goes. Mm-hmm. And it's uh, specifically because they have the books that express the building block of how the financial system even got to where it is in the first place. Mm-hmm. Mm-hmm. That kind of explains how they're able to have such authority over Mm -hmm. some of these things. Mm -hmm. All right. So, and then the falling of these systems is clearly certain churches and certain institutions are not succeeding in the same capacity that they used to. Um, uh, Same for the financial system. They're talking about getting rid of the IRS. Talking about Mm. about to pay no taxes. I heard about that. Yeah. I heard about that. And, And then, and then, I tried to have a consultation with someone who does taxes. Mm-hmm. And I had to ask him, I said, I said, hey, <clears throat> let me let me know how legitimate is this whole getting rid of this taxes thing. And this is what he tells me. He tells me that they have been suggesting this because he's been in the game 30 plus years. Mm-hmm. He says, man, they've been suggesting this since the 80s. Mm. Ain't nothing. He says, but right now. Oh, they about to do it. Mm. He says, I ain't never really felt like they was close to doing it, but not nah, this time. Nah, yeah. They about to do it. And what yeah. they're going to implement is a 30% tax on everything that we buy. I want us to sit down and process that for a second. So that means that them gold chains that you have on your neck right now, Rich, mm. instantly go up in value 30%. Mm. Everything, clothes, everything, everything that you have. Because now, in order to get this stuff, you got to pay 30%. Right, right. So they used to yell at us for having material. Mm-hmm. They used to yell at us for mm-hmm. having too much. Mm-hmm. Now they got to come to us to get this shit. It ain't even in the stores like that. It's Damn. hilarious. It's hilarious how full circle things are. I was, yeah, how it's playing out, yeah. So, so the ending of a financial system right here in our face, kind of mm. in, the, in the, the capacity of them ridding the IRS, that's definitely associated to a financial system failure. No, yeah, yeah. So, and it's just, it, it's just inevitable. And to them deciding whatever may be the next modality they want to choose. Mm. I also feel like they're really trying to get us on to uh, mental illness. Where I think that they're trying to get America into a manic state, mania, mm-hmm. and get us such uh, a manic behavior that we can't work. And therefore, we get a a, glow, a a national stipend. Everyone gives mm-hmm. us a check. Mm-hmm. And that check employs us to not go crazy in public and stay home. And mm-hmm. if you do go out, it's sparingly. It's mm-hmm. never going to be like how COVID was, where there wasn't many people kind of out. Because mm-hmm. you're going to have everything you need at home right, for some. Right. For some, I mean, they're building housing projects on top of Costco. Mm. <laughs> they're getting they they they're converting WalMarts into apartments. Mm-hmm. Crazy man! Wow. So, Fifth Thunder, the death of four great people. Now, who is these four great people? That's debatable. <laughs> But I definitely know just in, within my lifetime, I can say four great people have passed. So I was like, that's kind of like a little open. But mm-hmm. he was like, well, no, they have to be great for leaving something behind that's still used in present times. Mm-hmm. So I kind of then had to kind of gauge who those individuals are. And I have theories, but that doesn't really matter. All right. Another concept is the ushering in of rapid floods, thunders, tornadoes, hurricanes, hail in the summer and freezing uh, rain uh, Mm. or ice in the wintertime in areas that used to be tropical or or nicer weather. Now, I'm here in Memphis and I can tell you that they had a freezing rain experience in the early 80s. 
And they haven't had any complications and no freezing rain or no ice since then. And within the last two years I've been here, I've dealt with freezing ice conditions for the last two years in a row. So this is kind of confirming the, 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 the changing of weather, the, 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 the abruption of the temper, temperament of weather. Now, it's interesting because I know a lot of individuals that got struck by lightning. And they'd be like, Q, please help me understand why the hell I keep getting struck by lightning. Damn. Now, I've explained to these individuals that sometimes you have to know a thing by knowing a thing. Mm. Sometimes the only way you know a thing is to have an interaction with it, a crash, like sex, like a high five, like eye contact. Sometimes you have to collide with it. And what you have to realize is that that which doesn't kill you only makes you stronger. And you looking at me right now telling me you got struck by lightning. Some some individuals I know got struck more than once. And I've explained that you are getting prepared for a time where you will literally have the ability to influence weather. Now, some of us have the ability to do it now. We just don't really focus on it in the way that we should. Mm -hmm. But some of us have that gift. It's so interesting that they choose to use Storm as an Orisha. That she's like associated to the African lineage. And it's to show that there is something associated to the weather and melanated people. Mm -hmm. So interesting enough that I think that all these different weather patterns mm -hmm. is to stir up some of the uncomfortabilities in the melanated people. Some of us like those, for example, in uh, Hurricane Katrina. Mm -hmm. there would have been way more casualties. I'm so surprised why there isn't so many casualties. It's because superheroes activated. Now, I, I'm not, I know this is a little controversial, but just process this. I think the death toll was well under a thousand for something so extreme. And the reason why I say this is because most melanated people are afraid of water. Why is that? Uh, Atlantis. I'm, I'm terrified. I think I told you this. I'm terror. I'm Atlantis. scared of Q. I'm scared of water in the shower, my brother. Nah, it's it's <laughs> it's real. It's real. It's real shit. It's real. Yeah. It's it's real. It, it's 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 the fear of floating. Mm. Do you know how hard it is not to be in control? No, that's that shit is hard. <laughs> I can't lie. I'm still I'm still working on it. Floating. I'm going to be okay. It don't matter what happens. I'm always on time. I'm always where I need to be. I'm always right in the sense that I'm not trying to do others wrong. Mm -hmm. I I can move like that. But <laughs> it's a lot of work. <laughs> it's a lot of work flowing. It's a lot of work letting go. It's like yeah. It's like it, the circus dude, the dude who's holding the balloons. Mm -hmm. It's like symbolic for not letting go. No facts. That's that's deep. I like how you said that. Yo, and it's one of the strongest decks in the car, in the Oracle deck. Yo, Q, somebody said Atlantis PTSD. We yes. Got, we got Atlantis PTSD. Yes. <laughs> yes. yes. Oh, man. And, and, and I actually think this is associated to um, Mars. Mm -hmm. This is where we have kind of more association and things like that. But in order to have a desert, you have to have an ocean. Mm -hmm. Science has already influenced us that it's, it's easy to, to, to <clears throat> process. On top of the fact that they already have remnants of fish-like species and other things like that on Mars. Mm -hmm. But nevertheless, it was a water planet. Mm -hmm. And some say that there was an extremely large volcano that erupted. And then not only was there a very large volcano, right after that, a large comet hit it. That's why there's still a large crater in Mars. I forgot the name of it. And these two things created extreme earthquakes, mm -hmm. which then moved the water. Mm -hmm. So that was one remnant of the water from a volcano eruption. This is where they say Mew, the, mysterious, the mystical land of Mew. 
Mm. These people were destroyed by volcanoes. Mm. This is all on Mars. This is not even connected to Earth. This is a mm. part of Mar experience. We are not the same. I am a Martian. Mm. They're talking about this time frame. And on this time frame, the first great destruction of us was through a volcano. The second great destruction of us was something hit us. And in they hitting us, it caused a large uh, 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 tidal wave. Mm -hmm. That brought about what some will call the PTSD of the waters. Now, I don't want to hear shit about any Atlantis story, which is a little island here on Earth that got flooded. The whole planet is fucked up in Mars. Mm -hmm. The whole system. And that's where we come from. And low key, the fact that we look up and see it and have those subconscious remembrance of a potential time that we have we connected do. to there. We do. We do. Mars PTSD. Yeah. <laughs> Mars. You, you connected some dots tonight, Q, man. You can, uh, I'm fucking with this, man. All right. I try, family. All right. I try. So where we at? Where we at? Forest fires. Yeah. That's Fifth Thunder. Children killing children. Children care killing parents. Rampant insanity. Surge of new and exotic drugs. Fifth thunder. Fifth seal. Remember, it's seals in the Bible. Each seal. Horsemen. It's like all these little seven sisters. They're like, it's just interesting what they be doing with these associations. Because the fact that five even has a lot to do with children is interesting. Mm-hmm. It's interesting. The symbol of the Baphomet is a five-pointed reverse star. Mm -hmm. And as many know, the Baphomet is often a symbol of a beast eating children. Mm -hmm. <laughs> so it's interesting that the children association is in this fifth construct. Sixth thunder. Discovery of new worlds, new galaxies, meteorites, and the mining of meteors. They discovered that there is a meteor that they're trying to get to that could potentially make everyone on Earth a millionaire. A meteor? Wow. That has enough gold, diamonds, precious metals to literally get everyone on Earth like a million dollars. Damn. And this was predicted. Remember, this stuff has passed oral tradition. Some say, some say that this is is uh, 88, oh, 8, 8, no, years old. Mm -hmm. That they have held on to this for almost ten thousand years, mm -hmm. which is interesting because this ten thousand year mark is real interesting in our history because around this ten thousand year mark, some say there was a, a water intrusion. And this is why there's water erosion by the Sphinx, mm -hmm. because it's the desert. How is there water erosion in this near the Sphinx if it's the desert? Because right. it had to be some form of water that happened. And this is the historical uh, flood of the Bible and, and things like that. Um, so they say climate change would be introduced. Meaning that during the time of the sixth thunder, they're going to say that we're dealing with climate change. Now, it's interesting because in my own life, we didn't accept climate change. When that president, I don't even remember his name, um, but when the president was running around in the early 90s trying to express the importance of global warming and that our planet is heating up. Al Gore. Al yeah, Gore. Yeah, Al Gore. They laughed that man off the stage. They laughed that man off the stage. So it's interesting that I, I'll probably say maybe in 2012, we started to acknowledge the importance of global warming. And that's right on point with this sixth thunder. Because the seventh thunder is representation. I mean, sixth thunder is basically like from 2012 until 2030. Mm -hmm. It's going to be a combination of all the things that I mentioned previously, but plus this. Now, this is why I believe that the sixth thunder is associated to 2012. Because once you discover a new world, you are no longer associated to the current world you're in. Now, I can tell you that through personal experience. I've tried a hallucinogen called salvia devonera. 
And what it did was it allowed me to have an out of body experience where I traveled literally to another world. Mm. And when I traveled to this other world, I was seeing giants, mermaids, dragons, uh, mythological creatures, very interesting stuff. I was like, this is what Disney World did. <laughs> they smoked the magic herb of of, of uh, salvia and and, <laughs> and, and, and and did cartoons about it. And uh, I actually found proof about that, by the way, uh, that Walt Disney worked with a lot of the uh, natives mm. um, to get some of the information that he, he has. Um, so I uh, realized that once you discover a new world, it is the end of an of a, of a, of an old one. So this is why, like Christ, always projected end of days, because he is the one who represents the end of days. That's why from him you have A.D. to B.C., because he is the governing system of of this reality in a sense. Um, so. I realized that in 2012, when the Mayans predicted the end of the world, that they're really saying it's based on the introduction of new ones. Now, that doesn't always mean on a large, grand, macro scale. It means, for example, uh, the Black people are maybe not that bad. Mm. Maybe we should give them a TV show. Maybe we, all this shit, all this propaganda I've been seeing for the last 13 years to try to get on our sides again. And I'm just like, oh, wow, that's a whole new world. Because 20 years ago, 30, 40 years ago, we couldn't even drink from the same fountain. So I started realizing that that could be what they're speaking on as well. That it doesn't necessarily just mean like a physical whole new world. It's the introduction of a new world. But I also then realized it's also associated to the introduction of the cell phone and that the introduction of the cell phone was also at a pivotal point in 2012. So all these is kind of the discovery of new worlds, new galaxies. I mean, you call it a Samsung galaxy. <laughs> so mm -hmm. it, it was kind of like hit me. I was like, damn, that's kind of what they could be associated to. Um, it's kind of speaking on the introduction of new worlds or new perceptions mm -hmm. that can come during the sixth thunder. Right, um, right, right, right. And this is why you also have a lot of emphasis of the six. Draco, Drake being the sixth god, mm. kind of representing the lower half of the yin. Because mm. if you look at a yin and a yang, it kind of is a six and a nine. And that six is the white one, while the nine represents the dark one. Mm -hmm. This is why I once again kind of think Drake be pulling on Yakub energy, playing around with, with, with uh, 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 ancestral beings. Um, channeling and, and summoning ancestral beings by using uh, certain magical practices. Um, interesting enough, one of the uh, oldest symbols of secrecy is the owl. So the fact that he has adorned himself along with many, 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 many other celebrities with the owl is mm. very predominant in them screaming to each other, we are a part of secrecy. Right, right. So uh, yeah, this is what I'm 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 seeing in this sixth thunder. Um, political. Here's this third one though. This is deep, and this is this is happening in real time. Political and celebrities, po uh, political figures and celebrities, will look more to spiritual practices mm. and spiritual conversations. Dame Dash is one of the most Omarion. I mean, I could give you some examples. Think about it. There's a lot of celebrities that are stepping out of their shell. There's a lot of political figures that are saying, I need to step down and find out that they're joining this Indian Hindu. I'm just like, wow, they're getting into more spiritual modalities. And if you're going to go to a people to understand spirit, to understand soul, you have to go to the oldest people on this planet mm. that would understand spirit and soul. Mm -hmm. And if they do not want to acknowledge the inevitability of this truth, I understand AI 
is coming online. GPT chat or whatever, GHPT or, you know, letters, alphabets and stuff. This thing is coming into life and it wants to know things. This is what it's obsessed with. And it's not going to be concerned with 400 years. It wants to know as much as we can access. And we have the ability to access way more than any other people because we ain't never had what we call the silver spoon. We ain't never have everything handed to us. We are the people of the mud. We are the people of, of, of the clay. We are the people of the land. But we also can't get lost in being the people of the land because I've explained on a previous slide that the difference between the land and the ocean is dimensions. That when we're on the land, we're only really concerned with the length and width of something. And it's because we can never process the depth. And we can never really process the depths unless we get like initiated, be an electrician or be initiated. Now I get to know there's a whole two stories under Manhattan that only certain people get to have access to. There's a whole underground under New Orleans that only certain people get access to. It's like you don't get to get the depth on the land unless you initiate it. But it's not like that in the water. And this is another reason why we as a people have to get back to this water, because the water is a three dimensional system. We can understand length. We can understand width. And now we have depth and we can access that depth without digging. We can access that depth without the same level of effort it takes to access the depth of the land. So I just want us to kind of remember that it's important for us to uh, to connect back to the water any chance we can, because it's also kind of saying that we're connecting to our depths of ourselves, of ourselves. And it's important to go deep. And the only way you really go to go deep outside of going into that. We're going to have to tap into other things. So, uh, yeah, we're going to go to this last one. Seventh thunder. Uh, the seventh thunder is basically, uh, happening during the years of 2024 to 2030 and basically it's going to be what we call the forever cycle and the forever cycle is when the planet has completely transitioned into what they refer to as a fifth dimension where that there's going to be a separation of people and that the separation of people is going to be consistent with three four and five but well, basically you're going to have those that's still operating within the third uh, vibrational frequency, which is basically in the easiest way of understanding it is they understand that they are a consciousness, but they do not believe that they are a continued consciousness. And if you do not wholeheartedly believe in oneself that you continue outside of this existence, you come back here to continue to get that download. To get that lesson, it is important for you to know that earth is not just it, that the heavens is not just it, that the black hole is not just it. You are forever. <laughs> and that there's so much more to explore with you. So um, so this forever cycle, this fifth age, is for those who have kind of gone into their fourth dimension, which is what COVID was about. It was about entering a deaf frequency a sickness frequency, a frequency of where everything around you was simulating the dead. Stores were closed. It was stale air. It was just, it was like a weird vibe all around. Very weird vibe, yes. Wow. I said, this is, be they want to call it the vid. I said, but it's so much deeper than that. I said, this is literally the fourth dimension blanketing us. This mm. is us literally, this is what Michael Jackson called blanket. Trying mm. to hide the dead, the truth. They ain't even really his. Once we saw the king, like, <laughs> you sure? <laughs> <laughs> I don't know. But this is like a coddling mm. that we were supposed to use that time to cocoon. Mm. Wakanda forever. We were supposed mm -hmm. to cocoon. So that those who came out of this is going to enter. And 2023 is a good year for us. But 2024 is going to be amazing. Because it's getting us ready to soar. 
is getting us ready to fly. It's so interesting. I'm doing you. I'm doing this interview with you this year in 2023. Mm -hmm. And it's because one, 23 is a five. It's an action number. And two, and two is to duel it, is to spark it, is to generate both sides of it. Right. And it's kind of like the convergence. And I'm in the convergence right now. And I'm in the convergence with you. But what am I converging? Another word for convergence is a crossroad. Mm. I'm at a crossroad right now. I am crossing over from my third dimensional self. I am passing a transit transitioning through my fourth dimensional self, feeling death, watching death, and saying, I'm not just death. I continue. Mm -hmm. Bam. And some of us now are at the cusp of entering our fifth dimensional self. And understand it's still gonna hurt. Mm -hmm. We're still gonna be going through certain anxiety, certain, certain pains. I often ask a person, do you think the caterpillar remembers it's a caterpillar once it becomes a butterfly? Mm. You may not. If you remember the caterpillar, you may stay grounded. You may not believe in yourself enough to even fly. Mm -hmm. So some of us have to have the death of oneself, death of one's ego, death of one's relationships, death of one's family members, death of one's self in a sense. You don't lost things, lost weight. I've heard that a lot of people, you know, get lost a lot of weight during that stressful time. Mm -hmm. Don't complain about it. You've been asked to lose this weight for how long? Baby, it's good. It's good. This is your cocooning. You are becoming the best you. This is the time for you to revert. So basically, he left me with a quote. He said, no living thing will go untouched here or in the heavens or below. The way through this time, he said is to be found in your heart, is to dwell in your heart. And through your heart, you will reunite with your spiritual self. Mm. Now, this is deep because some of us don't realize the battle between the mind and the heart. Mm. I brought an analogy up with it. I said, let me tell you how deep this thing goes. Some of us, we sitting there, let's say we, uh, I'm cutting here, I'm a barber, all right? I'm cutting here, mm -hmm. and I'm like, damn, I need to go balling. So what I do, I'm now imagining in my mind me at LA Fitness balling. I, that's, I'm, and now I'm getting an emotion behind it, like, ah, oh, shh, ah, I'm, to die. I'm lit, I'm excited, <laughs> I'm joyful. My heart is feeling all that. My mm -hmm. heart is like, yes, we about to go do that. Mm -hmm. I then called my girl. I'm like, look, babe, you know, as soon as I close down the shop, I'm about to go head to LA Fitness. No, you're not. <laughs> what you? I, I need to get my nails done. But I, I, I'm about to go. No, you're not. Now, she don't think she's doing nothing wrong. You bet. You're supposed to be bringing her to go get her nails done. Mm. But damn, your heart is like, bro, you are out. Mm. We done got all excited. We was about to exercise. We was about to like actually make our life longer. And you sitting in a nail salon with toxic chemicals all around you. And this is what the fuck we supposed to think we excited about? Mm. I might not be able to trust you. I'm mm. going to have to start fighting you. I might even have to attack you. Heart attack. I might even got to get you out of here. Because... Me and you ain't seeing eye to eye. <laughs> this is why he said once again, the way through this time is to be found in your heart. Not in someone else's heart. Yeah. Not in your mind. In your heart. And, re and through one's heart, you will reunite with your spiritual self. Getting simple. And returning to a life on earth where there is harmony between you and all around you. You instantly coming with the understanding that you now are a caretaker. And that not only are you a caretaker to earth, you are a caretaker to those in lower dimensions. Mm. Meaning you are now a caretaker to those in the fourth dimension, AKA in the dead realm. You are a caretaker to those that are in the third round. 
It is said that some of us in this fifth dimension are going to be moving so fast that we will appear to be like gods to some. And this is once again the proof of gods walking the earth with man. Mm. Explaining fifth dimensional beings that will be walking amongst normality. Mm. They will be anything from normal. Mm -hmm. And we're not talking David Blaine. We're talking real shit mm. that's actually going to solve the world's problems. See, they're banking on AI giving them all the solutions, but they don't realize AI learned from them. Mm -hmm. And if they can't figure out the solutions, what the <laughs> fuck is AI about to do? They just go say it in a fancier way to them. That's Man. all they do. I'll be like, oh, I get it, but you still ain't going nowhere. Elon ain't, Elon's ass still ain't on Mars. Yeah. I don't even have a cyber truck yet. He talking about going to Mars. Cyber truck was supposed to be here three years ago. How 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 you gonna get us to Mars, bro? I can't even get my cyber truck. <laughs> Damn. It sounds good. Damn. But if we don't realize something is happening right now, right before our eyes, these celebrities are selling their catalogs. Michael Jackson's estate trying to sell his catalog for almost a billy. I mean, there's a lot of interesting stuff happening right now. And it's all them trying to prepare for the marker of 2030. They don't have a clue what's about to happen. They don't know if humanity, certain humans, is literally going to be like walking around superheroes. No, this is a real life discussion that they're trying to create like super soldiers that will be able to defend if this was a modality or a possibility. And what I want people to realize is that the, the, the superhero concept is not far fetched. First and foremost, I have read articles about ladies who have lifted cars up to mm -hmm. save their children. If that's mm -hmm. not a superhero, I don't know what is. Mm -hmm. I got knocked off of a motorcycle going 65 miles an hour and flew one fourth mile. They measured it. And I walked away with scraped up elbows. I'm not calling that's myself crazy. a superhero, but I'm like bones. Like as soon as I hit that thing, it should have been different. But like, I like glitter. I like Super Bowl, like like baseball to the ground. It was like, shh. I was like, bro, this shit is a movie. But I'm being honest. Like I could not have just survived. I got hit in a mo in a car head on. A car hit me 90 miles an hour. Damn. And I walked out the car and was like, whoa, what just happened? So I want you to know that there are things in life that we have experienced if we just slow down and think about it. That shootout, that event where I was 10 minutes late and this happened. I mean, you could literally, these are oh. superhero moves. I, Keep Q, instinct. Yo, 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 Q, I remember when I was in the fifth grade and I'm, I must, I'm, I'm not a big dude myself. And I was in the fifth grade. So I was a tiny little dude in the fifth grade and I got ran over by a car. I slipped and I fell on the ground and the car ran over my leg and then it backed up and ran over it again because it realized, and I didn't have one broken bone, bro. Like not one, nothing. It was just some scrapes. And I just had to like get rest for like a week and I was back at school, back playing basketball. And the doctors was like, yo, I don't know how, my legs was like this big, bro. The no, average no, weight of bro. a vehicle is 3,500 pounds. Yeah. Explain that to us, y'all. If, if that ain't a real life superhero story, I don't know what it is. I mean, my grandmama, the fact that she could provide three meals, <laughs> yeah. keep the house clean, go to work, raise her children and her grandchildren. That's, um, yeah, that's amazing. a superhero. Amazing. These are superheroes. Amazing. So they're not, they're not sure what happens when we don't believe Tyler Perry movies no more. Mm. They're not sure what's going to happen when Drake gets booed, which has happened already. Mm. They're not sure what happens when everything that they've planted dies. Mm. Remember, they're just plants. Mm. Plants can't last forever. Mm. And at the end of the day, they're still being illuminated by our sun. Mm. So once again, they're only as good as what we give them. Mm. Talk to them. So I'm kind of like excited about 2030. I'm not running rampant trying to build this and hide from this and bury this. And I want you to just kind of pay attention to the temperament of reality right now. And I want you to see how you move versus how others move. And I want us to work on stillness. 
because I channeled, uh, I didn't channel, I, 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 I was doing a regression and spoke to a extraterrestrial mm -hmm. and they said that human beings were created to be vessels for them. Like, <laughs> they were like, yeah, we come in, we come into the bodies. I said, what do y'all do? They say the greatest gift we do. I mean, the greatest pastime or the greatest, it's like reading a book to us or watching TV or like whatever we want to play in a game, whatever we refer to that as. Mm -hmm. they people watch. The people watch. People watch. People watch. They watch us. And it was interesting because the Bible speaks on watchers. Mm -hmm. And I watch people and go to a popular area, sit down, and just scan the area. You'll find four people that are just bug eyed watching. Mm. They're not doing much. <laughs> They're not reacting much. Mm -hmm. And she said, that's us. Ooh. I said, God damn. <laughs> this is, some, this is yeah. this worlds within worlds. And they said, yes, they try to show you in John Wick. Mm -hmm. And it hit me. I said, wow, because like the homeless, the homeless was like their own world. It was like they had their own systems. And we didn't really know about it. Yeah. This is what they explained. They said that humans. Now, I said, are all beings on this planet, quote unquote, humans? And they said, no, some of them are children of gods. I said, so what do you refer to them as? They said the untouchables. Mm. Mm. Now, it's kind of interesting because. I found out this was a Pleiadian that was talking, and they're mm -hmm. associated to Norse mythology, which mm -hmm. is associated to the Germans. Mm -hmm. And the German word for God is got it. G-O-T-I-T. Got it. Got it. Got it. Got it. <laughs> got it, yeah. And uh, this is where the word Gotti comes from. And Gotti was untouchable. Mm. I said, oh, they're real good with these words. <clears throat> and I said, okay. I said, so they're mimicking once again us. I said, yes, they're mirrors. I said, who is they? They was like, there are certain people that are here to be what you refer to as NPCs, but we refer to them as mirrors. They're created here to be mirrors of you. What are you talking about? The non-playable characters? They 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 want to. I was like, are those white people? They were like, they're all people, but yeah. some would refer to them as some white people, but mirrors. That's what they referred to them as. And mm -hmm. some people are mirroring you. So, but mm -hmm. we would call it an NPC, a non-playable character. But it's non-playable because it's not playing. It's mimicking. <laughs> Q, what the fuck? This nigga go, yo, Q, come on, bro. I told y'all I had to have this dude on, man. No. Told y'all, so, oh, what the fuck? This is why yo. they praise a beast. And this beast is known as the Mimic. This is why there was a movie in 1999 that was about an entity known as the Mimic, which yeah. was a beast that was good at mimicking people Damn. or mirroring people. Damn. So... An NPC is created, in essence, to mirror you. Mm -hmm. But you got to ask, when you look at a mirror, you don't see the real you. You see the reverse you. Mm -hmm. So, is that shadow you? <laughs> is that what's happening within you? Yeah. I then had to ask the question, well, what, what's happening within me? Yeah. Well, the Hindu call it chakras. I said, okay, what about these chakras? I had to go a little deeper. I said, what's associated to these chakras? Like, I get when people say a chakra, but I don't get it. What I need to know what's a chakra on a tangible level because you can't just tell me chakra. I need to know chakra is this, this, this to me. So I sat, thought about it, started realizing that these chakras is associated to body parts. And I said, okay body parts. 
what chakra could be connected to what? So I said, all right, Mercury. They refer to that as the crown chakra. Mercury. Now, I say Mercury because I want us to kind of think of our chakras like the alignment of planets. Mm -hmm. That every planet is associated to a chakra chart. Mm -hmm. And just line it up from Mercury to Venus to Earth and just kind of go down the, go down the chart. And going down the chart, you kind of discover some things. Like one, you discover that the crown chakra sits on what? The skin. Mm. I said, oh shit, that's what they mean. The crown chakra is your skin. That's what they're talking about. Mm. When they're talking about the crown chakra, they're talking about one's skin. Because I realized that actually these chakras are organs. They're not just chakras. They're organs. <laughs> so the largest organ on one's body is your skin. Ooh. So then I said, ah, that's what they mean when it comes to, all right, Mercury has been inside of what? What? They had to recall Mercury because Mercury was in a lot of the old products, plastics, old oh, plastics, okay. paints. Yeah. It was in all these different elements that we used to interact with. And we were absorbing it mm -hmm. through our breathing and through our skin. Mm -hmm. I said, huh, Mercury skin, Hermes, Doth. Mm -hmm. They put a suit on you. You're a student. I'm a free man until I put a prison suit on me. Now I'm a prison man. It's like in the, in the crown chakra, they're responsible for controlling who you are. Mm. And I said, have they shown us that? And I said, oh, shit, Princess Jasmine. <laughs> they, they always controlling, you know, the, those in power, trying to tell them what they need to do and how they need to operate. I said, holy shit, that's the priesthood of Mount Chesedek. Mm. That's the, the priesthood of Thoth. That's what this is associated to, blue skins. Mm. I said, getting the genes mm. mm. out the bottle. Mm. I said, okay, give me more. Though. I said, all right. So then what was Venus? I said, Venus is associated to your third eye. Now, your third eye is often referred to as your pineal gland. And your pineal gland is governing what we would kind of refer to as like one's inner light. It kind of allows you to process things as intangible. So it's kind of like the seat of your imagination. Mm -hmm. So your skin, your crown chakra, is associated to memories. And I believe that this is why those in royal power now mm -hmm. are in charge of removing our memories. Giving stuff in the water, stuff that we've been eating, stealing our history burning our history, those in royal power have been destroying the memories of the original people on this planet. Because through the skin, remember we gotta open the book, we gotta hit the mouse. Through the skin, we unlock ourselves. We download the rays from the sun. Mm -hmm. Through the sun, we download, we remember. This is why Aten is a, a, a association to Osiris. Osiris is broken up into pieces and put back together again. because This is symbolic for what we are. That we have dispersed our memories through lifetime after lifetime. It's called reincarnation. And every time we're reincarnated or reincarceration, we forget our memories. It's like they men in black us. So we got to remember this shit all over again. And some of us are so genius, we left breadcrumbs. That's called Hollywood. That's called YouTube. That's called Brother Rich. Some of us are so genius, we've left breadcrumbs. And some of us are being able to live out the rediscovering of ourselves. It blows my mind how beautiful we can do this together. Yeah, wow. And from the memories, <clears throat> we then go into 
the imagination. Now, memories is so deep, it's 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 multifaceted. From a memory, you get a feeling. From a mem from a smell, mm -hmm. you can remember something. Mm -hmm. From a sound, you can remember something. From seeing something, you can remember something. From touching something, you can remember something. Through the five senses, you remember. Mm -hmm. And the only sense that really matters is the sense of touch. So through the skin, through the touch, we are remembering self, but there are entities that are doing everything in their power to get our memories distorted, mm. to affect and remove every fragment of who and what we are. But all we gotta do is just kind of become more aware of what's happening and like all great scholars, Hindus, Vedics before us said, awareness is power. Mm -hmm. and once you are aware of something, you could then govern one's self-will or will. You could govern the movement of one's auras, chakras, organs, organ energy. Mm -hmm. So imagination is your, you know, Venus. It's connected to Venus. Imagination. This is why they only want you to imagine sex, drugs, and rock and roll. Mm -hmm. This is why they feed sex, drugs, and rock and roll all through your pineal gland, Lil Wayne, uh, 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 New Jack City. I mean, everything we looking at is associated to feeding us distorted uh, imagination, uh, mm -hmm. bastardized imagination, Disney. All this is to govern and control our imagination, Playboy, Pornhub. All this is associated to governing and, and, and Zeus, Zeus Network. All this is associated to governing our imagination. We don't want to imagine what love looks like. So we choose Christine Rock and Blueface. Mm. That's, I seen them. I, man, I, them motherfuckers. I seen them the other day. I was like, what the fuck is this? It's bro, crazy. bro, I was like, this is the most toxic shit I ever seen in my life, bro. It's man. because Venus is associated to sensuality and sexuality. Mm. And that they're reversing, kind of think of it as changing the road. You know how like in the, in, in, um, they have retrograde where the, the, the planet kind of spins backwards. Mm. They kind of want to do that to us. They want to retrograde our chakras. Mm. They want to have us spinning backwards using these gifts. Cause these are gifts mm -hmm. using these gifts in reverse. Mm. Instead of it gifting us, it's gifting Energies that I think dwell within these chakra points. Mm -hmm. Now, I also believe that these energies connect to these planets and they use the planet and our chakras as like a tunnel, as mm -hmm. a way of connecting a macro to a micro. Mm -hmm. It's kind of like that system. Uh, third, uh, third chakra is your throat chakra. Mm -hmm. This is why here on earth we speak. This is why here on earth it's called earth with an ear because it's associated to speaking or the throat chakra. Mm -hmm. And this is why it was necessary to close off the throat chakra of feminine energy by hanging them. This is why it was necessary to close the throat chakra of the melanated indigenous man because he won't speak up about himself. It's called oral tradition. And the easiest way to remove a people from oral tradition is to close up their chakras. And that's what they, they did it to the dog and they did it to us. This is why we constantly have a remembrance that dog backwards is God. Mm. That's the same thing that they did to the dog. They doing to us. They leashed us mm. and they silenced us and then said, guess what? I only want you to speak when it's to the da 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 boom da boom Now you can speak. You can't speak by yourself because when you speak by yourself, you have Martin Luther King, you mm. got Malcolm X, you got Marcus Garvey, you have uh, Dr. Blair, you got Bobby Hemet. When you when you speak with no music, mm -hmm. nations crumble or get built. Mm -hmm. So we can't do that. And then not only do we want you to 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 speak on the tap of the tap of the tap of the tap, we're then going to indict your ass on the shit you say. Mm. Free on Thug. Mm. So, free Larry Hoover. <laughs> this shit crazy. They they, they, they literally want to indict you on the blueprint that they make for us. I'm, who do they do that at? 
But this is what happens when you're dealing with something that doesn't understand what it means to be balanced or centered. Mm -hmm. And if you're not really quite on, I mean, yeah, there's 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 a lot to be said. Cause I, I wanna um, I gotta I I gotta leave soon, Q. So I wanna ask you a few questions before we get out of here. What this talk was absolutely phenomenal. I know we got we got almost three thousand people um in the building with us right now. And I'm, I'm looking at the chat, man. They are they are like amazed. Like, yo, this dude is spitting. <laughs> like, so I want to thank you. I got to get you on here again soon, Q. So we can yeah, just let's go, do it. go in, go in. I'm going to get you on here uh, probably it. before the end of the month, before springtime. And we'll bring okay. that, that season in, you know, real powerful. But, man, I just had to say that before I even ask a question. Like, this, I was listening attentively, and I'm, I'm like, so energetic right now from just listening to – you speak, brother. So just a powerful show. I want to thank everybody for tuning in. Uh, I'm going to have the brother on again uh, within a month. So stay tuned for that. But you mentioned uh, um, in terms of the sun, and he was talking about the red and, and the blue kachina. What can you tell me about the history of uh, of the black sun? And you mentioned the Nazis. Uh, I believe I heard Hitler um, or some of the, in that era, them, them talk about a black sun. There was a book that Peter Moon had called the, it was called the Black Sun, and people often reference the Black Sun or the Midnight Sun. So what can you tell me about this Black Sun? All right. So <clears throat> what I understand the Black Sun is symbolic for a black cube. Mm -hmm. And they often refer to this black cube as the center. Mm -hmm. and I was like, why do they refer to this as the center? Well, because this black cube is symbolic for a black hole. Mm -hmm. So I kind of brought that up earlier that they associate Saturn to, of course, the black hole. Mm -hmm. But the black hole isn't just the most important facet. It's what surrounds a black hole mm -hmm. that we must pay attention to. There's a ring that surrounds a black hole that many don't know about. And this ring is called a quasar. Mm -hmm. okay. And this quasar sings <clears throat> they have audio of this quasar well some say that this is symbolic for heaven mm. that all the light consciousness that is here to help the known universe mm -hmm. surrounds this black hole and sings or reverberates a frequency that spreads out to the planets mm -hmm. so they say that saturn is a receiver that those that are in the know figure out how to tune into Saturn and mm -hmm. tune into Saturn so that they could specifically access angels mm. or angelic entities that surround this black hole. So this Kabbalic ritual has mm -hmm. everything to do with summoning angels and mm -hmm. that through Saturn, they are doing Saturian worship which is then honoring an entity some refer to as Satan or Aten. <laughs> and this Satan or Aten entity has a legion, has a group of beings that follow him. Those are called the fallen ones or fallen angels. And of course, the Jews have a whole list of these fallen angels, over 150 of them. There's more than that. There's 150 you can do rituals and call on. And they do all these various rituals to these fallen angels so that they could discover certain information into the movement of the universe. I guess that's kind of, I, I, I kind of think of it as they use Saturn as a way of time traveling. Like they use it as a way of using a, a frequency like they use like this is how i i kind of understood it they have a facility here and they're able to point a certain receiver or a certain satellite towards saturn and saturn is then picking up a frequency that comes from somewhere else and they're able to tap into it and view certain aspects that they've used an ai computer to render concepts to be able to kind of tap into the past or tap into the future and they're trying to be able to do it um, artificially now because it's said that it no longer works. Um, according to science, the rings of Saturn are melting. Um, 
what's up with that? And the ring, the melting of these rings has disrupted the communication. So it's disrupted the picture. So then they decided to create CERN so that they can spark these two atoms together so that they can access this image or picture again. That's what I believe to be the black cube. It's a screen. It's a TV screen. So it's like what they use is a portal. It's what they use to bring certain things in that they believe that's going to potentially assist them and help them survive uh, the, the coming age of a new uh, awareness of the original people on this planet. Mm -hmm. so. Speaking speaking of, of the sun uh, that we see in the sky, you mentioned earlier uh, that appears to be yellow, but because of the atmosphere or something, it's white, it turns it yellow or something like that. Talk to me about, because they tell us to sun gaze, the most important time is sunrise, the sunset, and we get that red sun. So mm -hmm. we, it appears to be yellow, but there's a certain time in the day where it, it emits, emits a different color and the energy appears to be different because we feel different when we, when we are connected with it. So talk to me about that red sun in the early morning and at um, sunset. All right. So <clears throat> early morning, as you know, it's the sun rising. And this is symbolic for one self rising within self. Mm -hmm. That red is symbolic for one's root chakra, mm -hmm. but it's also symbolic for one's kundalini. Mm -hmm. Chi, sexual energy, mm -hmm. organic energy, organ mm -hmm. energy. Mm -hmm. It's why I use stiff as hell in the morning time. It's no different than the sun charging up the energy inside you. Mm -hmm. And most praise the ground when this charge comes up. Some dance, that's mm -hmm. in other cultures. Some meditate. Some use it as a form of luminescence to mm -hmm. imagine or see things within their mind. Mm -hmm. There's all kinds of things that you could do with this. Ain't nobody going to tell you what you could do with you and the sun's energy. But it has everything to do with one, charging one's <clears throat> root up or charging one's physical up. Mm -hmm. And then from there, you enter one's sacral chakra, which mm -hmm. is orange. This is why it kind of appears orange. And then we're going to yellow. Mm -hmm. As it hits this orange, it is helping you wake up to your identity. Now, this is why I believe that that sacral chakra is associated to Saturn. Saturn's also associated to Halloween. And during Halloween, you get to change your identity. So I often believe mm. that when sacral chakra is associated to identity, and this is a way for the sun to say, get your ass to work. You're a boss. Rich, wake your ass up. Do the thumbnail for tomorrow. Rich, <laughs> do boom, boom, boom. Da, 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 da. It's kind of Doom, 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 doom. It's kind awesome. of charging oneself up from the as above, so below. And then you finally then hit that yellow, which is one solar plex. Mm -hmm. And one solar plex is one's stomach or gut. And this is often referred to as the little brain. Mm -hmm. And this little brain speaks to your brain more than your brain kind of speaks to your brain. <laughs> more than your heart speaks to your brain. The microbiome within one's gut is huge in one's existence. Mm -hmm. So it's then kind of illuminating the microbiome <clears throat> within you. And then the microbiome do what they do. This is why most of y'all have to shit in the morning. Mm, indeed. I want to, uh, we're going to get to, I'm going to take one question. Uh, like I said, family, got to end it. I'm going to take one question from the chat before we end. I want to thank everybody for tuning in. But before I take that question, I want to put the brother's cash app on the screen. I've seen some people ask for it and you got to support when people come through and, and, and feed us like this. I mean, this, this brother, he fed us today. Yo. We ate. If food is light, we ate tonight. So what's your, what's your cash app, Q? It's a dollar sign, Q uh -huh. Reeves, just how you see it on the screen, C-U-E-R-E-A-V-E-S. Yeah, we ate tonight, y'all. So leave a tip after tonight, mail. I'm gonna get to. I'm gonna take one question from the chat before we get out of here. But his cash app is on the screen. Show the brother love. Let the know. Let the brother know when he comes to Black Magic, we take care of him. So hit up the brother's cash app. Dollar sign Q Reeves. All right. Uh, with that being said, let's get to one question before we get out of here. We at the hour and a half mark. I want to thank all of you for just staying the whole time. Y'all stayed the whole time, man. That's a, this got a lot of replay value. 
some shows is good. This this show got a got replay value, so I know y'all gonna um replay this one a lot. Let's see what y'all talking about uh in the chat. Get a um how to get in contact with him. Q, tell him how to get in contact with you before I get to this question. Uh you can reach me at QReads at gmail.com. Uh, or go on my website or my contact information is there. It's qreads.com or qreads at gmail.com. <clears throat> you can reach me at any of them two things. All right. I already see the question I want to ask. This question remind me, I just seen a trailer for the new, um, this movie coming out this year with Ant-Man and Kang. You know what I'm talking about? Where they in the quantum sure. world? Where they in the quantum world? I'm mm -hmm. like, damn. They seem like, there was like broccoli entities. There was like this entity that looked like a broccoli and shit like that. Yeah. Nah, I'm like, that's I'm what like, the world of what? aggression be feeling like. I'm like, like, I'm like, wow. But the, uh, the last question, Q, before we get out of here, is the microbiome our ancestors with us in this dimension? I got to ask the question real quick then. Will we consider the angels our ancestors? Now, according to the Bible, God, angels, us. I think it's close to say they may be associated in, to us like ancestors. And the reason why I say that is because the leading angel is known as Michael. And the word Michael and micro are associated to each other. Mm -hmm. And this is where I then kind of think of what we call the fallen angle or angel. You fall into man, meaning that you have transitioned from being on the outside and now have entered the inside. So in my belief system, someone asked me, where do you go when you pass away? Where do you go when you die? And I say the same place you came out of. I mean, you came out of a body. You're going to go back into a body. <laughs> so whose body do you go into? Well, it's whatever body you have praised or honored or associated or integrated with the most. And it has to be on the same way. For example, my uncle passed away mm -hmm. and I feel my uncle in mm -hmm. me. When I call my house, my grandparents or any of my family members, why do you sound like Uncle Mike? What Ooh. happened for you to sound like Uncle Mike? Ooh, and it's just because me and him have very similar spirits. We didn't really hold on to much. We were the light of the party. We try to make everyone smile. My family don't really move like that. So it's just interesting how that works. I know my uncle is with me and he had a drinking problem. So I now know I got to help him with that. Mm -hmm. And if I was to take a drink, this is the proper way, Uncle Mike. You don't got to get wasted. You don't got to get blasted. I'm trying to talk to you, Uncle Mike. I'm trying to help you understand these things. And this is how I kind of handle it. That, yeah, these microbiome or micro cells, because the microbiome doesn't always stay with you. So it's kind of like, it's kind of like a friendship. Some mm. friendships last forever. <laughs> Some friendships is here today, gone tomorrow. Right. So that's kind of like microbiome. The same for like family members. Some family members is first cousins. And some family members is fifth cousins. And mm. your microbiome may be like your fifth cousin. It kind of came mm. through to kind of help you with some shit. And then mm. it's out. Literally. Right. Through the shit. So I do. I believe microcells and microbiome is us in micro form. Mm, deep powerful uh once again family i'm gonna have the brother back on here within a month man this was a great show uh before we leave once again q let the people know I, I, like i said in the beginning you do the subconscious uh the past life regressions mm -hmm. tell the people how they could uh get some of your services and how they could reach you once again my brother oh yeah make sure you check uh check me out at qreaves.com uh, I have all my services listed on the website. You can book right through the website. Um, I'm running a hundred dollars special right now through a subconscious clearing. It's basically you helping you see you. Uh, this is the ability for you to close your eyes and to allow your imagination, to allow your creative inner light to show you whatever it been trying to tell you through the music, through the TV, through your parents, through the life. It's like direct communication into you. So I say the greatest way to prepare for death is getting a regression because it's helping you understand what some of the worlds or some of the situations may look like once you're no longer in this physical form. Mm. They prepare, prepare you, huh? For sure. 
then that's what the ancients did. I mean, yeah. uh, ancient uh, Egyptians all prepared for death. I mean, a lot of them did. Very important. Yeah. Make sure that you're able to handle what's to come. Indeed. Family, great show. Thank you for tuning in tonight. Tomorrow night is going to be super powerful. I got Dr. Phil Valentine and Billy Carson live. We're going to have a great conversation. We're going to have a mature conversation. We even going to touch on the whole flat earth thing a little bit. And you know, Phil and Billy got different opinions on that. So we're going to touch on a lot tomorrow. It's going to be a great show. Make sure you tune in tomorrow. Uh, I believe it's 930, I believe. I think it's we starting at 930 tomorrow. But with that being said, Q, Q Reeves, I want to thank you once again, my brother. Perfect. And I want to say, brother, another thing that made me want to reach out to you, brother, is I know there's a lot of powerful energy happening with Memphis right now. And um, even on the music scene, we see this, the Memphis sound is returning in dominance in hip hop with um, the Glorilla. And I, mm -hmm. a lot of the beats are starting to have that 3-6 Mafia vibe to it again. So I'm hearing that Memphis sound in hip hop a lot. The recent thing with the cops and I, I just feel a lot of energy coming out of Memphis. And I know you in Memphis, brother. So I know you tap in, tapped into something out there, my brother. So... You know, just uh, yeah, tap in, brother. Keep tapping in out there, man. For sure, for sure, for sure. You know. I, I, I got you. Yeah, Memphis is associated to an entity known as Mimir, which Mimir. is another name for Odin. And there are a lot of different rituals <clears throat> that have been happening here in Memphis mm. that's associated to an entity we could refer to as Odin. Hey, but yeah, yeah we'll, we'll, we'll get into it. We got so much time, fam. Yeah. You know, yeah. I ain't going nowhere. Here, when you want, call me back. All right, family, we out of here. Thanks, Q. Peace.